Hello you guys. Welcome back to my channel. It is letter five on Tuesday, February 2nd, and I am just working, finishing up working for the day, and I wanted to pop on and just talk to you and try to get back in the swing of filming because I have not been filming. I'm going to tell you why. I, most of the time since I work from home, I don't get ready in the morning, meaning like I get up and wash my face and brush my teeth and all that, but I don't put on makeup unless I have meetings. So today, you know, I had meetings today, so I got ready, but I just like to let my skin breathe and not do too much, like put too much on it. So when I don't have makeup on, I'm not embarrassed to go out in public. I'll go out in public and do whatever without makeup, but when I'm filming and I like to look nicer, I don't really feel like turning a camera on in my face, but we have a lot to talk about and I want to do that today. So let's talk about it. December went by super quick as do the holidays in general, but it was just particularly busy for me professionally, personally, a lot going on. So I read three books in December and I read five in January. And I was trying to decide whether or not I wanted to do an entire video dedicated to um, all the books that I read and call it that, or if I would just do kind of a talky style video, which is what I think I'm leaning towards. So let me go get my phone and I'll be right back so we can talk books. Give me a break. Oh, hello. I like the light of my monitors. I, I like filming in here. Let's get into the books that I read in December and I'll talk a little bit about them. I don't remember a ton, at least about one of them I know because I tried to film this video uh, at the end, beginning of January and it just didn't happen. So in December, I said I read three books, and that's correct. I read The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. I gave this three stars. I thought it was a fun, kind of scary um, book. It's about a woman who is a housewife, and she's really bored, and she joins a book club, and they talk about true crime books. And it just navigates, like, the... Anyway, um, she's just dying for some excitement. And then one night she goes out to take out the trash and her elderly neighbor attacks her and tries to eat her. And then she passes away, the old lady. And then the great nephew moves in. She becomes friendly with him and she discovers that he is not who he thinks he is. And as young children are going missing around um, in a poor area of town, she starts thinking that maybe he's behind it. And this is about vampires and a group of friends who come together to defeat evil. So I don't wanna to get too much more into it, but I thought it was fun. I really love Grady Hendrix's writing. He wrote My Best Friend's Exorcism, which I read in... Hey, I'm filming right now, can I call you back? All right, bye. Anyway. Um, I thought that My Best Friend's Exorcism was great. I read it in like three hours one night on the couch. It was a super fun read and the way that he writes is just, it's my style, it's my favorite. I, I really love the way that he writes and people that write like him. So if you've read his books and you know his style, I thought it, I gave it three stars, I thought it was good. It definitely had some scary parts for sure. Um, there was one particular scene that has involves rodents that still haunts me, so you don't like rodents, like I don't like rodents, then that will probably freak you out. So Emma Scott wrote Full Tilt, which I loved. It was one of my favorite books of 2020 and probably one of my favorite books ever, to be honest. This, this video is a mess. To be honest, I just loved it. Not so much the second book, but I talked about that in a wrap up back in the day. A Five Minute Life is about a woman named Thea who was in a car accident on the way to her sister's graduation. Um, it takes place in Richmond and she gets the worst case of amnesia ever seen in the world. And so she goes to this um, hospital in the Blue Ridge Mountains in Roanoke, Virginia, that special that can take care of her. And basically she has a five minute loop of which she remembers things. She remembers her sister. She doesn't remember the accident. She remembers things from her past kind of, but anything 
current, she just forgets when a five minute uh, span. In comes this man named Jim and he is working here as an orderly and he immediately is attracted to Thea. He didn't think she was a patient when he first met her and then upon talking to her he realized that she forgot things really quickly, hence the amnesia. So he kind of becomes her advocate when everyone else doesn't think that she's going to be able to beat, um, not beat it, but become better and heal her brain. Everyone thinks she's just stuck and he sees something in her drawings. She was an artist and she was doing these things called word chains and he starts to look at those and think maybe she does realize what's happening underneath and she just can't express it. So the way that she's expressing it is in her word chains and it just kind of follows their love story and will she be able to get better and all of that. So again, I gave it three stars. It was pretty good. It wasn't anything super special. Her romances are always pretty good and swoon worthy, um, but not too cheesy. I don't love the cheesy romance books at all. Here's more of a cheesy one, but I enjoyed it. I'm contradicting myself. I gave it four stars. It's I Promise You by Ilsa Madden Mills. I read this on Kindle Unlimited. I read all these on Kindle Unlimited, I believe. Except for The Southern Guide, I read hardback that I own. But I read this on Kindle Unlimited. It has a 4.2 average. But I mean, the people that are reading Kindle Unlimited are people who typically like romance books. So every romance pretty much by a well-known author on Kindle Unlimited has like a four or over, which is not normal on Goodreads. You, you're hard. To see 4.4, 4.5s, but this is a 4.2. And this follows a guy who is a freshman in college and he goes to his first bonfire. He's on the football team, he's a backup quarterback, and second string. And they tell him this legend that don't kiss a girl at your first bonfire or you'll be cursed and she'll be like the one girl you can't get over. And of course, he kisses a girl and Flash forward three years later, it follows both his and the girl he kissed perspective as they navigate, tr potentially trying to have a relationship. It's pretty, uh, predictable. I don't remember that much about it. This is the book that I don't remember much about. I remember enjoying it in the moment, but it just, it didn't really stick with me. So Keep that for what you will. If you want something that's, it's not gonna, it's not hard hitting. It's not gonna resonate with you. But it was fun to read. You know, was, I read it the week of Christmas. It was just like a nice little, little break. Now, let's move into January 2021. I read five books, which I'm super impressed by. Now, one of them was kind of short. So how impressed am I really with myself? But last year I only read three in January. So we're off to a good start. My goal for 2021 is 55 books and I've read 47, 48 in 2021, so in 2020. So I think that 55 is a pretty good goal and I intend to reach it. The first book that I read was another Emma Scott. I read two of those this month and that was, or last month, The Butterfly, the Butterfly Project. And I gave this book four stars. <laughs> Emma Scott writes really good damaged heroes. Every character, in every book that she has, typically has some type of trauma. The two, the two main people have something terrible that happened to them in their past and they're trying to overcome it, a lot of demons. And it's not just the men, but the men are definitely brooding. Um, of course, once you break down their walls, they're very sweet, but this is no, this is no exception to that. Zelda, Rossi was actually a character in Full Tilt. She worked at the tattoo shop with Theo. It's not gonna mean anything to you unless you've read the book, but this was about Zelda who, when she was young, her sister was kidnapped and taken and Zelda watched it happen and her sister was 11, she was 14 and she tried to chase down the van but couldn't and her sister was murdered. And she starts writing this graphic novel. She's a tattoo artist in Vegas, but she moves to New York to pitch her graphic novel to some publishing houses. And they say, if you can make it in New York City, you can make it anywhere. She's not making it. She was kind of turned down, but the assistant pulled her aside at this big publishing house and said, hey, if you can revise it, it needs more heart. Revise it, I will be your advocate, and I will try to get you to pitch it again. And so she's struggling because she has like no money. The hostel she's staying at gets robbed. She doesn't want to go home to Philadelphia to get, first of all, because she doesn't want to give up her dream. 
second of all it's just way too hard for her to go home and be around her family because she feels very guilty and responsible and also it's just sad it's just really sad to go home so she decides to stay at this hostel one more night and then she needs to figure out a place to live because she got robbed at the hostel she's like i'm not doing this anymore she goes to this italian restaurant kind of has a panic attack goes outside and this guy who was a busboy there named beckett they kind of start talking and eventually they work out a situation where zelda moves in with him and it's a very small new york apartment but she's like you know i know you have a hard time making rent you work multiple jobs i'll get a job i'll help you with rent and during the day i can write my book i'll stay out of your way well of course they start to get to know each other and a relationship forms and they start to fall for each other and he what is his problem again he is a felon because he needed money for his dying grandfather so he broke into this house with two of these guys and they had a gun that wasn't loaded they just kind of had it for show but the couple came home early and the old man got so scared that he had a heart attack and died and he feels a lot of guilt for that which he obviously should so he writes letters to the widow and she never writes back and he writes to her as he's getting to know zelda and their relationship forms it's a really good book i thought it was good i mean the way that she writes is so good and so spoon worthy and we'll get to see whether or not their relationship works if her you know her book gets published and how that happens so i mean it was it was fun i recommend any emma scott really they're not all hits but they're all like worth reading in a good time typically I also read In Harmony by Emma Scott this month. I gave it five stars. I really liked this one. It's about a girl who was assaulted when she was 17 and she's from New York and she moves to the small town because her dad's job relocated and her parents are not very involved with her. They're kind of disconnected and she decides to try out for this play and try to speak her pain through someone else's words. And she meets a guy who is an incredible actor. He's very well known, but he's also kind of like the bad boy. Uh, he says to himself and nobody really messes with him because, you know, he just has a reputation of being a guy from the wrong side of the tracks. Well, actually that is really weird. I, as I said that, I just looked down at the synopsis and it literally says wrong side of the tracks. I didn't read that before. That's really strange. Well, the book did a good job because I just quoted what the synopsis says. So they are, the Isaac, the, ma the main love interest, and Willow, the female, are, the female love interest, main, main character, are cast together in Hamlet. And they start to run lines together, and they start to get to know each other on a different level. And it's definitely a slow burn romance. They don't get together right away, but there's definitely attraction. There's definitely attraction and he learns more about her past and she learns about his and he has a bad, you know, he has a bad home life. I can't have any peace. He has a bad home life and it's just a story of overcoming things. It's definitely an 18 and up book. All of, most of these that I'm saying are, so if you're younger than that, you know, you might want to get permission or whatever, I don't know. But yeah, In Harmony, five stars, recommend. Next one I read is A Place Without You by Jewel E. Ann. And this is a Kindle Unlimited book, all of these were, and I gave it 2.5 stars. It has a 4.32. This is about Henna and Bodhi. Henna is this rich girl. I kind of have a rant about this, okay? I kind of have a rant. Henna is this rich girl. Her mother was a model. Her dad, her stepdad is a record label owner or something. And she goes to Coachella every year with her real father. And essentially she's a rich girl with no responsibilities, never had a job. She is a smart ass at school. She, okay, well she has a, she was in a helicopter crash and her friend in the helicopter died. We don't learn too much about that. I wish we would have focused, but I know she was in a really dark place during that time, which is of course awful. And she, you know, had thoughts of taking her own life. And I mean, it, I definitely felt bad for her in that aspect and so she had a lot of pain because she got surgery on her back and she starts to use marijuana as a pain medication you know she, she uses to help dull the pain 
and but that's not what I'm ranting about. So she goes to this Coachella and she's just a free spirit in her short shorts, which I love, you know, wear whatever you want, but she's just like, woo, Coachella. And her dad can't come because he gets sushi poisoning. Her mom's her best friend, not really a mom, and sends a security guard to follow her around. And she immediately gets a ride chair from the hotel to Coachella and meets this guy named Bodhi. And they are immediately attracted to each other, thinking about doing all the things. He's working there as like a stage manager or something. He's working the event. And they just keep seeing each other. And like after two days, they are telling each other they're convinced that they're meant to be together forever and that they're in love. And you know, she's like, I'll find you. And she, so their two week, their two day love affair goes to an end because he leaves and she goes home and they keep in contact via text once a month. She'll be like, hey, rem hi, remember me? And his reply is always, yeah, I'm pretty sure you're still my best memory. And she's like, are you over me yet? And he's like, not even close. So, I mean, this, the story just gets, it has so many different wild aspects it's a wild ride okay and not not in particularly a great way in my opinion if you like this book i'm sorry but i didn't so she goes into school which she's a smart aleck to her principal she barely goes she just does not care about school she doesn't you know ever want to go to college because she doesn't have to because she knows she's taken care of which is fine but also do you not want to work for anything? Like she literally does nothing. She doesn't work. She doesn't do anything. Okay. She doesn't do anything. So go to Coachella and skip school. And she walks into her new guidance counselor's office. And who do you think her new guidance counselor is? Bodie, Mr. Malone, Bodie Malone is her new guidance counselor. Mr. Guidance Counselor and a whole lot of inappropriate things ensue, but they're like, we're meant to be together. We're like soul, two souls, henna and Bodhi, Bodhi and henna forever. You know, they're doing dirty stuff in his office. She's 19. She missed a year of school um, because of her accident. So shout out to Julie Ann for at least not making her a minor because that's a whole nother slew of issues that we'd have to discuss. But still, I mean, I don't know the laws around that, but He's an authority figure in her school. He's her guidance counselor. And the principal kind of catches on to it a little bit, but because she just wants Henna out of her school. So she's like, I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna do anything. I'm not gonna fire this guy, but like, so eventually Henna drops out. And the whole time there's things that they don't talk for a while, but there's, I hate you, but I love you more. And you know, she, she's hanging out by his van when she's still in school. And the principal comes out and is like, you need to stop. And she, you know, she doesn't under, she does understand, you know, this man could lose his job. He has a sick father who he, Bodhi got high and drunk, fell down the stairs on top of his dad who was trying to help him, paralyzed him, and now his dad has cancer. I know, it's a lot. And he has to take care of him because he feels guilty because it's his, you know, it's not his job he has cancer, but it's his job he's in a wheelchair and can't walk. As if, you know, the cancer wasn't enough, we had to throw that in there, which is just horrible. And I didn't even realize I had this much to say about this, but apparently I've, I've pent up a lot since I read this a few weeks ago. But yeah, so he's trying to take care of his dad. He needs his job. He needs his money. He's just wrecked with guilt. And Hannah just will not leave him alone. She shows up at the ranch where they live and the horse ranch that they take care of. You know, she's always, you know, coming all upon him and making his life hard and he loves her but she's just inseparable so then she drops out of school and she just sits in her house all day and waits for him to come home and apparently she draws but we didn't elaborate enough on that all I know is that there are sketches of them doing dirty things all over her room I don't know how that makes you a painter worthy of like being sold in a foreign country which is what she was saying um, oh because she loves him now that she's dropped out of school she's still you know she's still 19 she's not graduating she's not even gonna get her GED she's like I don't need this and I'm not going to college because she has all this money from her family I guess they don't want her to have any goals for herself and she just takes off for two months two months or like years she's gone for years on her parents dime 
flying all around the world, meeting people and making new friends, and she leaves him behind to stay home. And she'll send him postcards and stuff, but it's just bizarre. So they kind of lose touch. They kind of, it kind of falls off, right? And he's not kind of, but I'm sorry. Take a shot every time I say kind of, you'll be passed out. She comes home and they don't reconnect. She goes to Coachella. And of course she runs into him at Coachella. I've never been to Coachella, but, or they're staying at the same hotel. And she runs into him and they reconnect and all of this stuff. But then, and she, she, they come back and they try to have a relationship. The father pretty much asks her to help him with assisted suicide. And apparently in, Cal in Colorado where they live, it's legal. I don't know the laws behind that, but she agrees to help him because he's just in so much pain and Bodhi wants him to keep fighting. Bodhi's sister wants him to keep fighting, but he just doesn't want to do it anymore. He wants to go out with dignity on his own terms. She helps him, he finds out. Bodhi finds out that she helped him, which I don't even know why he needed to find out. I don't know why she needed to tell him. But she, the, the details don't matter. They kind of fall off from that. And then she has a birthday party on a yacht. Her parents buy her, oh, her parents buy her a yacht for her 22nd birthday, a huge yacht with its own staff. But the yacht's next to the yacht that she's having the party on, right? So the parents invited Bodhi to come on the part in the yacht. And I think he proposes to her on the yacht after they hadn't seen each other because he was mad, but because she helped with her fa with his father's assistant suicide. Anyway, if that discussion, that rant wasn't enough for you to never pick this book up, I gave it two and a half stars because at least in its insane ridiculousness it was kind of entertaining but not in a good way in a very unlikable way and i do not recommend it i mean if you want to read it just to experience it go ahead but don't expect to get anything hard hitting out of this there was some good writing and some interactions with them but there was just a lot of sex scenes which i don't mind sex scenes but at a certain point i just flipped through it i'm like i don't need to read about this right like i know how all of this works i don't need to read about 10 different times in a book. I mean, how many times can you explain what they're doing? So yeah, it just, it, I think the thing that bothered me the most was that she had absolutely no goals other than be, to be with Bodhi. That's all she wanted. Maybe she'll sell her sketches in another country on the side, I don't, on the side of the road. I don't even know what that whole thing was about. She just had a lot of issues, but nobody was encouraging her to accept travel the world on her parents dime nobody was encouraging her to you know like, what's your passion other than this this grown man this 24 year old man when you're 19 what's your passion what do you want to do i'm done talking about that never again and then the last book was really short i didn't know it was going to be this short when i picked it up i'm sorry we're losing light i read everything my mother taught me by alice hoffman and this was it's like a really short 60 page Amazon Original Stories Inheritance, apparently it's apparently it's a show and each little book is its own episode, kind of like Black Mirror, I would assume, but Black Mirror is not a book, you know what I mean. This follows a hunting short story of loyalty and betrayal. A young woman in early 1900s Massachusetts discovers that in navigating her treacherous coming of age, she must find her voice. So basically this girl named Adeline, who her mother is, an, is an, she's an adulteress, she's an adulterous mother. And is really mean to her and doesn't take very good care of her. And when her dad dies, she decides to stop speaking. And it leads them, the mother needs a job, so they go to this island where they're a lighthouse keeper. It's a really small island. Like, you have to row to shore to go to school. And it follows her mother basically having an affair with one of the lighthouse keepers. And then the lighthouse keeper starts abusing his wife. And Adeline is really close to the wife and helps her escape. Probably be a good... TV episode to be honest so if you're interested I think there's a whole bunch in this like four or five in this inheritance series so go read that what am I reading right now I'm reading something that Chandler Ainsley act actually recommended in one of her videos I started watching I didn't continue watching it because I wanted to read the books I have all three of them actually on my TBR first one that I'm reading is hate by Tate James and this is a Madison Kate novel number one Basically, it's like a reverse harem novel. 
about this girl and three guys. I don't want to get too into it, but I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to do with it. You know what I mean? She has relationships with each of this. There are three friends and she has in relationships with each of them. But from what Chandler said, they don't ever all get involved. It's kind of like they're all okay. It's polyamorous, I assume. But yeah, it's pretty good so far. I'm like 30% in. I'll keep you updated on that. What else? I don't know. I have big goals for this year for my book channel. And I know I've been gone forever. And I'm working on consistency, but there's just so many other things in my life that have to take precedent. My bookstagram is linked down below as well as my Goodreads. So please go follow me there. And I will see you in my next video. Subscribe, like this video, stick around. I would love to have you and I will talk to you next time.